Okay, now I am going to make a, a cauliflower uh, meal. So, sort of like mashed potato, but instead I'll be using cauliflower. And for those of you who are African, West African, I'm going to be making something that looks like a cauliflower equivalent of pounded yam. So, I have taken my cauliflower, basically I've taken it out of the leaves. I haven't um, done much to remove the center stalks, but that's because those bits are actually quite nutritious. And I am using the slicer cone just to get the pieces from this side. Just to get the pieces fine so that they cook easily. It actually doesn't matter much because I'm going to end up blending this anyway. Okay, so I'm using the slicer cone. Look how thin those slices are. Okay, but that's not, I could, you could use any of the um, um, cones. The point is just to get it into smaller pieces so that it cooks uh, evenly. Um, you can do this with anything actually. You can do it with aubergine, you can do it with cabbage. The important thing is, you get the semblance of carbohydrates and what you're really eating is vegetables so you, it's good for people on the Dukan diet also because it doesn't take you out of your ketosis or your fat burning and you don't feel as if you're missing much okay so there we have that and for this I use the slicing cone see it's just straight lines like knives many knives slicing the beauty of this is that it actually gives you even slices, many of them. I'm going to just put some water in that, just enough um, to get it steaming. And when we return, I'll be blending it and then um, combining it using something called psyllium husk. I'll tell you a bit more about that when we come to that. Okay, see you soon. So this is the cauliflower cooked up with a, you know, we put a little bit of water and it's nice and soft. So now it's ready for blending. So we'll take it off and put it in the blender. Well, I start by the cauliflower puree has been put back in a piece of cookware and put on the flame. As you can see, it's bubbling a bit, which means that it's ready for the thickener. It's just a puree at the moment. So now this, as white as it is, I'm going to use cornstarch with it, and that may not be very ketogenic on a keto diet, but on a Dukan diet, you're allowed to use um, cornstarch. So I'm using cornstarch. I'm not actually claiming this to be keto, but the idea is Dukan diet takes you onto ketosis, low fat, low carbohydrate diet, and it is still possible to eat food that looks like what you're used to. This will end up looking like mashed potato or like pounded yam. Here's my cornstarch. And I'm just gonna stir it in. I should have probably um, strained it so that it would not go into lumps. But yeah, that's the idea. So it's giving the equivalent, it could be like a light mash. No buttery flavor, because we're not doing butter in this. If you are doing a keto diet, you could probably put in a knob of butter, because of course you, you wouldn't be minding the, um, the, the fat. But we're not doing that. I think that's forming. You can see it. it's taking shape. It's holding its shape. Yeah? So... Um, we could also have used the um, psyllium husk. The thing about psyllium husk is that it turns the color slightly pink and I want it to stay the, the color that it is because if you were eating pounded yam or you were eating mashed potato, you wouldn't be eating pink pounded yam or pink mashed potato. You'd want it to stay the color, its natural color. Should I put one more spoon, spoon in? Maybe one more spoon. I think it can take one more. 
without breaking the carbohydrate bank. <laughs> you know. Do you know, this is actually making me eat, want to try one of my favorite meals from Bella Italia, lamb rosmarino. I could do it with chicken, where basically you make a rosemary gravy and you have some veg, usually green beans, string beans or so, and you have your mash and you put your lamb shank on top of that with some sauce. This looks like it'll be beautiful for that. Okay, then. there's the mash equivalent or the pounded yam equivalent, whichever you choose to do. In this case, we're not having it with gravy and uh, regular veg. We're having it with an African soup, okra soup. Okay, so today I would like to make some African soup. Okay, I say African soup is West African. I'm going to make some okra. But one thing that is could be used and which I love is stockfish. And I've got a little piece here. It's hard and dry. It's a bit like the Caribbean stockfish. Um, sorry, saltfish. Except it's not salted. This has been simply dried in cold, dry air. And it is desiccated, completely hard, yeah, almost like wood. But I'm going to cook that down now, and then I'll be able to take it off the bone and flake it, and then it'll be a, a, a lovely addition to my okra. So there we are. It's called stockfish. I'm going to rinse it off. wash it off because you know you buy it like that with the, the skin out just like that just washing it all off is a lovely piece this and every bit is useful including the bone it goes soft now I'm gonna be using this piece which is the one quart salad master piece as long as it fits which is the same cone I used to spiralize to spiralize I put what I wanted to spiralize at 90 degrees to the surface and that's how I got my spirals right so now I've got an onion prepped um, now I want to chop that onion up I'm going to show you the pieces so I've put that in there and this is the guard and I'm simply going to press it on There we are. I've got my chopped onion. Have a look. There's my chopped onion. And I'm going to add that to my stockfish. I'm going to add a little water on there because I need that to soften. So, cold water tap. Water to just about cover my stockfish. I can season it from now if I want. I actually don't want to season it much. But I do want to add some pepper. I'm using dried flaked pepper. Just to give that stockfish a little flavor. As it cooks, I will put in um, some stock cube. But right now, I'm not putting in anything, no stock cube, no salt, because what I want is for it to soften. And I'm going to put that now on a medium click low heat and i'm going to keep it quite low and let it um cook now of course because of the size of that piece of cookware i don't need a large flame i am going to use a small flame here small burner which is at the back here um now i want to cook some some okra soup so i've just put some kippers and a tiny bit of the, the tomato blend. This is the okra that we blended up in the blender. Frozen okra we used. So we put a bit of water and blended that up. That's waiting to go in. There's the flaked salt um, stockfish. I was going to call it saltfish. Waiting to go in also. So here we have a um, um, combination of some stockfish 
some um, kippers and then I'm going to add a little dry crayfish, a little dry pepper and then we add the okra. I'll show you once I've done that. Without any oil, fish, delicious. 